Good morning, Family Church. Welcome to a post-Easter service. This is what post-Easter Norman looks like. <laughs> Starting a brand new series today. I'm excited about this called Moving Forward. Moving Forward. And we are going to be taking the month of April and talking about this idea of moving forward. So what is moving forward? Have you ever felt stuck before? It's the opposite of that. All right, it's the opposite of being stuck, moving forward. And I don't know if you're like us, but our staff is feeling an urgency to get moving again, to get the kingdom of God and the things around us moving forward, to begin to chase after our dreams again like never before. I almost feel like I lost a year of my life going after my dreams and chasing goals. I, I do. And so we have this urgency in our team of what does it look like to now move life forward, okay? Uh, if you are stuck, if you're not chasing your dreams right now, then maybe this sermon is exactly written for you. So I want to read a very popular passage today. It is the story of Jesus walking on the water. Jesus walking on the water, okay? Okay? And I, I'm going to tell you something. I learned something. I, I, I'm a Bible student. I study the Bible all the time. I would love to call myself a Bible scholar, but I don't have enough pride to do that. Uh, but, I, but I do believe that I find a lot of errors in other Bible scholars' theologies. In any case, I learned something new this week. Ready? Three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, three of those Gospels record Jesus walking on the water. But only one of those gospels includes the story of Peter walking on the water. Oh, you knew more than me. You already knew that. Can't teach you nothing. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just messing. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. I thought that every single one of them, right, would include Peter walking on the water because that's so awesome. So then I had to like try to figure out why. Why did only Matthew's gospel record it? So, there's no, there's no evidence. There's no real reason. I'm, I'm making this up, okay? So here's my own biblical theology on this. Uh, the book of Mark was written by John Mark, who was close friends with Peter. So Peter kind of told him everything, and he wrote it. So whether through Peter's humility or his pride, I don't know which one, whether he was like, no, 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 don't say anything about me, or it was, yo, dude, don't put this in because I almost drowned, Either side, that part of the story is left out of the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of John, John was the disciple who bragged about the one who Jesus loved. And I think John had something against Peter, because he was always like, I outran John to the, or Peter to the tomb. I was better than Peter. You know, Peter's over here bragging, but I was next to Jesus' bosom. I think John felt some sort of way towards Peter, so he left it out too. I just made all that up. I have no idea why somebody who is much smarter than me in Bible theology will have to tell me later. But the book of Matthew is the only book that talks about Peter walking on the water. It's in the, ch it's in the 14th chapter of Matthew, and it's right after they just fed 5,000 people. They feed 5,000 people. Jesus gets them in the boat. He sends them to the other side. Let's read this in Matthew 14, 22. Right after they fed the 5,000, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against the boat. So picture this in your mind, right? I, I like to create stories and visions in my mind. They just fed 5,000 people plus women and children. So we really don't know what that number was. It could have been 15,000. Huge, huge miracle. Jesus sends them ahead, ahead because he needs to pray. But because of the wind, the sailboat, right? They didn't have motors then. It was a sailboat. The sailboat couldn't get across because the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. 
Here's the first problem in, with moving forward is when it seems like everything's against you. Even the wind is against me. Did you ever hear the story of the grandfather who took a nap and his kids took, I don't know, is Limburger cheese a stinky one? Yeah, so they took Limburger cheese and they put it on his mustache while he was sleeping and he wakes up and <laughs> So if you're Spanish, he'd be something like, Oh, right? something stinky. And go, goes into another room of the house. Oh, it smells in here too. Goes into another house. The whole world stinks. But really, it's just him. He stinks, right? The, ever felt like the whole world's against you? Everything you're doing is against I mean, there's a problem when you're on a sailboat and the wind is blowing in the wrong direction. My job's against me. My knee is against me. My back is against me. Everybody, my spouse is against me. I can't do anything. Everything. A lot of times the reason we get stuck is because we're blank, too busy blaming everything around us in order to move forward. Was the wind a problem? It was a problem, but it wasn't the only problem for them to move forward. I mean, they could have got their paddles out and rowed. They could have made it. Check this out. Shortly after, shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. So my man wasn't swimming. He wasn't rowing a boat. My man was straight walking on the water. The disciples saw him, so it's a little before dawn, still dark out, probably got some smoke coming off the water, right? The disciples saw him walking on the lake. They were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. So, although I do believe Jesus was a practical jokester, and I do envision that he was walking on the water like this. <laughs> to kind of be funny. When he saw that what he was doing was inflicting fear, he put an end to it. Ah, stop, 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 stop. Just, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. It's me. It's Jesus. Take courage. Don't be afraid. Many people have asked. Many theologians have studied this out. Why did Jesus walk on the water? What is the deep revelation knowledge that we need to receive from this story? The, 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 the hidden truth of the gospel of why Jesus walked on water. And I have figured it out. Through years and years of studying this passage, I have figured it out. Are you ready? Are you ready for why Jesus walked on the water? Jesus walked on the water because he could. Because he could. That's it. That's as deep as it goes. Because he could. He missed the boat because he was praying. He comes back down. Boat's gone. The disciples are right out there. I could rent a boat and row it out to them, but why should I do that when I can simply walk on the water? If I can, I should. And that's what he did. He walked on the water. It don't get any deeper than that. If you had a choice between renting a boat and having to row it, or simply just walking out on the water, which are you gonna choose? That's why he did it. That's why he did it. That's why he did it. And if we try to make it more theologically deep than that, we're just wasting our time. But he will use what he did to teach a lesson. Okay, we get that. Peter cries out, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out to you on the water. Notice, notice Jesus didn't say, well, Peter, let me take a moment and pray about that. He didn't say that. He didn't say, well, Peter, I would. But see, what's gonna happen is about halfway out, you're gonna drown. He just, he doesn't do any of that. 
He calls Peter on his word. If this is you, Jesus, if this is you, have you ever asked, God, are you in this? God, is this situation you? Is what's happening right now you? Are you part of this? Jesus says one word to him. He doesn't give him a dissertation. He says, come. Come. One word. Come. You want to be where I am? You want to know this is me? Come. Get out your comfort zone. Get out your boat of certainty. Get out from behind your desk. Come. So then Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. And seriously, honestly, I wish the story ended there. I do. I really do wish the story ended there because I can celebrate. Dude, you're the only one out of all 12 who got out the boat. Yow, that's a miracle. But we don't focus on that because church, for some reason, we love hating people. We love seeing someone more miserable than us. Seriously, it's crazy. We gotta hear the bad part of the story. I know, too good to be true. So, Peter's out of the boat. He's walking on the water. He's almost at his goal. A lot of us do this. We start working towards a goal. We start working towards a future. And then he begins to look around. Well, I know my goal is there, but man, these waves, they look a lot higher out here than they did in there. And as Peter gets further away from the boat, closer to his goal. I've never been here before. I know what there feels like, but I've never been here before. My goal is right there, but I'm used to being over here. Look what it says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Peter gets further and further away from certainty. I know this. I'm familiar with this. I've got to question, this might even be Peter's own boat. Peter was the fisherman. This might be his boat. And if it is his boat, it was passed down to him from his grandfather and his great-grandfather because normally if you were the business owner, it was a family business. I know this. I don't know that. This is an unknown future that I'm working, walking towards. But let's just go back. Have you said to yourself lately, I can't wait for things to get Back to normal. Put me back in certainty. Put me back in a boat. Anyway, can we just be for real for a second? We were all complaining about 2019. 2019 was no great. It was no great thing. But it was like, oh, but let's go back to where it was before the pandemic. But you were miserable before the pandemic. They, I don't want to go back. I want to move ahead. <laughs> Peter begins to sink. All his possessions are in that boat. His life stories of how big a fish they caught are in that boat. Here's what I've learned. When the distance from certainty becomes greater than the distance to your goal, 
So I'm further away from certainty and I'm right about gonna reach my goal. Self-sabotage will try to attack. You're just a pound away from your goal and someone invites you to a barbecue. Well, I can't be rude. I was invited. I wanna go. But I'm not gonna eat anything. I'm not gonna eat anything. And then they put that triple layer chocolate cake out in front of you. Well, I can't be rude. They worked hard to make this cake. I have to have a bite. The further you get away from certainty and the closer you get to your goal, self-sabotage will try to attack. I, know, I want you to notice something in this story. The devil is never talked about. The devil's not in this story. The devil didn't make Peter sink. Oh, how we love to blame something else. Oh, how we love to blame the chocolate cake. Oh, how we love to blame. I'm being nice. I don't want to hurt their feelings. We have a group called Celebrate Recovery who talks about codependency very fully. You can go check that out because that's what that is. Self-sabotaging for the sake of making someone else feel good about themselves. It's not healthy. It's not a healthy place. Peter's right there. Like, I don't even know how close he was. He was probably one or two steps away from Jesus. And nothing's changed, guys. It was still the same storm that he was in while in the boat. The waves are still the same size. The wind is still the same. The only thing that has changed is that he has moved from inside of certainty toward his goal. Nothing else has changed. The only thing that has changed is his position. Circumstance the same. Climate the same. Jesus the same. Boat the same. But I'm not the same. I'm not in the same place. Now this self-sabotage tries to reach him, to attack him. He's within an arm distance of Jesus. He's within arm distance of Jesus. He's right there. But instead of looking there, he's looking there. I wish the story ended before this point. I do. Because something happens. Something happens. Nothing has changed yet. Peter couldn't swim before this. He can't swim now. His possessions were in the boat. They're still in the boat. The waves and the storm are still the same as when he was in the boat. Nothing has changed but Peter's location. Now he's a step away and he thinks to himself, just get me back to the boat. Just get me back to the way things were. His goal is right here. His Lord is right here. Peter begins to sink. He cries out, Lord, save me. Immediately. I love that. It didn't, well, you said you wanted to come out here. Swim, boy. None of that. No shame. He's not, he's not trying to like teach him how to swim right now. Immediately, he reached his hand out and caught him. So how close was he? Pretty close. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Now this wasn't one of those, you of little faith, like it was not a shame, it was like, why'd you doubt me, bro? I was right here. I was right here, dude. This part I don't like. I don't like this part of the story. Ready? And when they climbed into the boat, the storm stopped. Now, you might think that's awesome, but I don't like that. Because now Peter was affirmed in his belief that as long as I'm in the boat, I'm safe. See, I knew it. I knew it. 
As soon as I got back here, I'm all good. As long as I'm in here, I'm safe. This story affirms that. See, as soon as we got back to the boat, Jesus, storm stopped. Mm. It's a confirmation bias. We all have it. It's that moment where we say, see, I knew it was gonna happen. As long as I'm in the boat, everything's safe. As long as we get back to the way it was, I'm safe. Peter attaches his confidence to a place instead of a person. See, 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 see that's, that, that's what ends up happening with this story. It aggravates me. Is that Peter associates the, 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 the safety and security and the certainty to being in the boat instead of being with the person. Jesus. We getting this? We getting what I'm saying yet? It gets deeper. It gets deeper because it reaffirms it to Peter. I'm attached to this boat. He doesn't realize Jesus was saying, but Peter, you were always fine. You were fine in the boat and you were fine on the water. But I was drowning. You were still fine. You ever felt like you're drowning? God, just, just save me, I'm drowning. You're fine. You're fine. You're in two feet of water, stand up. Like, you're fine. I'm right here, you're fine. Nothing can happen to you because you're within proximity to me. You were always fine, Peter. But Peter had a connection to the boat, a connection to his past, a connection to the way things have always been. And if I just get back in the boat, I'll be fine. If I can just get back into the boat, I'll be fine. And Jesus is saying, yeah, but I'm calling you out of the boat to a new season of life. I want to show you that you're not bound by a boat. That you can walk out into dreams and a future that no one else has walked out in before. I'm calling you to dream bigger than you've ever dreamed. We do this with our own lives. As long as I can just get back to the way it was, I'll feel security. But your security must not rest in a place, but it must rest in a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. Your security, listen, if it's in any human person, they're going to fail you. Your security can't rest in that. Your security must rest in Christ alone. Peter had such a connection to his past, though. He had such a connection to this stupid boat. But we all have a boat in our lives. We all have something that we've held on to. We hide it in our hearts somewhere. It's kind of our go-to place when things are tough. Jesus, later on, Jesus is crucified, Jesus dies, the movement is over. The disciples are kinda hiding out for some time because they really don't know what to do. Our God is gone. Watch this in John 21, verse three. Peter says, I'm going out to fish. Peter told them, and they said, We'll go with you. So they went out and they got into that doggone boat and they caught nothing. Could I tell you, nine times out of 10 going back to your past is gonna profit you nothing. <laughs> Woo! You better tweet that. Let's just go back to the way it was, and they caught nothing. Didn't profit you nothing to go back there, son, because I called you out on water. I called you to walk where no one else has tread before. I've called you out to trust in Christ alone, not in your own strength. Caught nothing. Watch this. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore, the answer shows up. The answer shows up. The fish finder shows up. 
But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they said. He says, well, throw your net on the right side of the boat. No, let me just tell you something. I've preached this many, many times. Let me just tell you something. I went out fishing Wednesday. We caught nothing all day. Yeah. It didn't matter whether my line was on the left side of the boat or the right side of the boat. Fish weren't there. They weren't biting. It wasn't a bait issue. It was a fish issue. The fish weren't there. So you got some stranger saying, oh, wait, you're a professional fisherman. You've been doing this your whole life. You're fishing on the wrong side of the boat. If you throw your nets on the right side, you'll catch some fish. Yeah. This is obviously not happening in New York. Because a New Yorker would have told him some business. They're like, oh, whatever. Let's try this side of the boat. They throw their nets on the right side of the boat, and when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, right? John's talking about himself, said to Peter, it is the Lord. Watch this. The first story, Peter is worried about drowning. This story as soon as Simon Peter heard, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken off, and he jumped into the water. The man who was drowning before is now swimming. He swims back to shore. The same man, just a few weeks before, is now voluntarily jumping into water where he cannot touch the ground and swims to the Lord, and he says, it's time to leave the boat. It's time to leave the boat. He jumps out and swims. It's time to leave the boat. It's time to leave the past. It's time to leave that hurt, that pain, the habit, the addiction, the excuse. It's time to leave the boat and swim. Swim towards your future. Swim towards your goal. For some of us, we need to just burn the boat. Because as long as we still have a boat, we keep an option open to go back to it. Some of us have been so paralyzed by the disillusion of certainty that we've been stuck in that boat our whole lives and didn't realize that we're in an ocean full of possibilities. Stuck floating around. This is just how it's always been. And I just want to get back to the way it's always been. And but Jesus is calling you out. He's calling you out to a new life. How do I move forward when everything is screaming at me to stay in the boat? You got to focus your ears on one voice. You got to focus your ears on one voice. Not your own, but the Lord. The Lord. Everything else is going to tell you to get back in the boat. Let me ask you this. When are you going to do the things you've always dreamed of doing? I'm 42 years old. If I live to be 84, I'm midlife. Start thinking about things differently now. When, I've been, I've been doing this job since I was 14 years old. I don't know anything else but church. I worked at the mall once for a few weeks. While I still worked at the church. Like, if you have a dream in your heart and you're my age or older, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do the thing you've always dreamed of doing? Well, when, when, when we have enough money, then we're going to have kids. Um, you're never going to have enough money to have kids. You're never going to have enough money to have kids. That's, that's just never going to happen. All right? You just do it broke. Broke. 
when I have my degree, then I'll, then you'll sit at home and talk about when someone finds your resume online. See, because it's, it's always something. It, it's always the water's too choppy, the wind is blowing too hard. It's always something. But I say, when? 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 When is the dream that Jesus put in your heart going to come to life? It's not going to happen stuck in the boat. I tell you this, and although I'm asking you when, it's not really a matter of when. It's a matter of when you get a hold of who. Who is calling you forward? I know, I know my God, he doesn't work in reverse. He doesn't work going backwards. My God never looks at your past. My God never goes fishing in your sea of forgetfulness. He's calling you out to move forward. You will not change the lives of others while seated in the comfort of certainty in the boat of your past. You never will. You'll never impact somebody else's life stuck in the certainty of the boat of your past the way it always was. And you know, isn't that what we do? Like we get together with the guys from college or high school and sit around a bonfire, let's talk about the good old days. Let's make some good days now. Let's make good days now. Let's make good days tomorrow. It's time to move forward. I wanna take a moment as we pray out here at the end to pray for you for boldness. The strength and the vision to begin to move your life forward once again. I don't care what the thing is in your life that has you stuck, this is your year. This is your year to get unstuck, to find out the thing that's been holding you in this boat. Can I be bold enough today to call you out and in to your calling? that there is still a mission in your life that you have not completed yet. If you are still alive on this earth today, there is a mission that you have not completed yet. It's time to get moving. I wanna take a moment and speak to the spirit of humanity and to call those dead dreams back to life again. You had a dream once, you tried it, it failed. You had a dream that you were working towards and COVID happened and it has been delayed. You had a dream of doing something. You had a relationship that was going somewhere and it got broken and I wanna pray today and call those things that are dead back to life in your life again. I wanna call visions and dreams to resurface in your life again. I want to call a commitment to leave a legacy for your children and your children's children out of you today. There's some of you that still need to share the gospel with your loved ones. I want to call it out of you today. I want to call purpose out of you today. If you're hearing my voice, whether online or in the room, or a year from now you got this MP4 somehow, I'm calling it out of you today your giftedness, your purpose, your calling. It's bigger than your past. It's bigger than your today. God is calling you out of certainty to a realm that you do not know to do things you could have never imagined. Man, the word of God says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. He's already prepared the provision if you would get out the boat. He's prepared the provision if you just get out the boat. I'm going to tell you some stuff. This, is, this isn't church stuff. I'm going to tell you something. 
this is such an amazing season that we live in right now. I'm telling you right now, if you ever dreamed of selling your house and moving, right now is the time. Right now is the time. You're never gonna get a better price in your house than right now. I'm just telling you right now, the real estate is ridiculous right now. If you haven't, like, what's whole, like, what's, like, seriously, what's stopping us from chasing the dream? When's that going to happen? God's calling out of you. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. If you're hearing me today, you still have tasks to accomplish in the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is ever advancing. It's moving. Move with the advancement of the kingdom. Get out of your boat. I'm gonna say this online, get out of your offense. Get out of the thing that has offended you, get out of it. Let it go, stop it. Life is too short for this. Life is too short for these dumb online comments. Life is too short. Like, move on. Advance the kingdom. Get out of your slumber. Get out of your complacency. Some of you have been finding yourselves lately just napping like six times a day for no reason. Get out of it. Wake yourself up. Shake yourself loose. Get out the boat. And walk towards your calling. Father, we thank you today that your word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, I pray right now, I call those things out of us. Dreams and visions and desires and plans, I call them back to life again. That we would continue on the mission of the kingdom, that we would continue on the mission of our lives. Lord, bring back to our remembrance the promises that we made to ourselves when we were kids dreaming about who we were going to become. Help us to chase those things once again, but not alone. Hand and hand with you. Lead us down that path. Empower us by your word. I thank you, Lord, today that we begin to dream again. Big, audacious dreams. Dreams that offend other people because, God, you're that big. You're that big. We thank you, Lord, as we leave here today that we're protected and safe. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hey, there are tables set up in the lobby of our care team. If you need prayer for any reason, if you wanna check in with someone, say hi. We have tables set up in the lobby and our offering baskets are at the doors on the way out. Love ya.